What is going on, everybody? This is Patrick Valentine, and I am here to give you my greatest Royal Rumble review. In Saudi Arabia. I'll tell you what. Tell you what, this show was a quick pace show. It was very quick pace. Most of the five hours, in my opinion, kind of felt like it was going to be based off mostly of the four fifty man Royal Rumble. That's where it kind of felt where it was to me. Because this show was very quick pace. Most of the matches were pretty short. And it just looked like they just wanted to get it over with. But... The fans in attendance, you know, a lot of people were saying that the Saudi Arabians are big wrestling fans. I couldn't really tell. I couldn't really tell because the Saudi Arabian fans were not really into the matches. Yeah, Triple H got a nice cheers. John Cena got some cheers. Brock Lesnar got some cheers. The Undertaker got some cheers. Yeah, some of the wrestlers got some cheers. But it to me, it feels like the Saudi Arabians are not really big die-hard wrestling fans because they didn't make a lot of noise and that was a disappointing factor to me about the Saudi Arabians oh, I'm not gonna be too hard on them I'm gonna give them a lot of a lot of respect because it's their first time and all those little kids you know seeing something like this for the first time with the families you know but I'm not going to be too hard on the Saudi Arabians. I thought it was just, you know, something that I found, found really, really odd. But let's talk about the review, man. First things first, before I talk about any other match, I want actually want to talk about Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I want to talk about their match first. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, man. It's the same old shit. It's the same old shit with these two. Suplex, suplex, suplex. F5, F5. Superman punch, Superman punch. Spear, spear, spear. You know? And, like, you can even hear the commentators even keeping track of it. The, the commentators will say, Oh, here's the scoreboard. We got four F5s, three Superman punches, two multiple F5s and multiple spears. Why are you keeping track? Why are you keeping track of all that? Who cares? And everybody, including myself, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking, in the back of my mind, in the back of my brain, I was thinking, what if? What if? Brock Lesnar actually wins. That is what was going on in the back of my mind. I was like, can you imagine if Brock Lesnar actually wins? Because Vince made us all think that Roman was going to win at WrestleMania. And Vince tricked all of us. He swerved us all. And then I was thinking, you know what, maybe he could swerve us again. He could swerve us all again. And actually make us think that Roman Reigns again is going to win, but he will make him lose just for the swerve. And I'm thinking that's what he's doing. He's only making Roman lose for the fact that we keep thinking he's going to win. And he always, and he always has that like, ah, ha, 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 ha. I tricked you, I tricked you. Ah, uh, you all thought Roman Reigns was going to win. <laughs> I tricked all of you. That's just how it feels like to me. That's just how it feels like to me. Like, Vincent Mann just does it to trick you. But, on the, other, on the opposite side, I was looking at this in a different way as well. Is the Roman Reigns experiment 
finally over. That is my stance on that. Is the Roman Reigns experiment over? God, I hope so. God, I hope so. And that's the thing that I want to... Well, that's the main thing about this match here. It's that to me, it feels like the Roman Reigns experiment could be over. I swear to Jesus Christ, if they give Roman Reigns one more title match, then I am done. There is no way that this guy deserves another title match. He lost at WrestleMania, and he lost at the Greatest Royal Rumble. No more opportunities. Send this guy down to the mid-card. Or better yet, turn him heel! That's another thing you could do! Turn the guy heel! Turn him heel through frustration! That's another thing you can do! The guy just lost two times in a row and he let down the fans. Sure, the fans don't like him, but through storyline, he let down the fans. Turn him heel on, like, Seth Rollins or something. Turn this guy heel. Roman Reigns needs to turn freaking heel. If this guy does not turn heel, but because of this, then I don't know what the hell is WWE doing. There's no reason to keep this guy as a face anymore. The Roman Reigns experiment is over. The Roman Reigns agenda is over. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. There is absolutely no way, no way in hell, that you could give this guy another opportunity. Roman Reigns... A needs to turn heel. B, this guy has no business being in the main event anymore. Roman Reigns has had his chance. Just because he's Vince McMahon's boy doesn't mean he needs to get multiple title matches. Makes no sense. Roman Reigns is done. Roman Reigns is done. No more title matches. No more universal title shots. This guy does not deserve any more title matches. I don't care what kind of excuse they're going to come up with. He deserves no more title matches. And do you want to know what's the funny thing about all this? The reason why they're keeping the title on Brock Lesnar so that he can pass CM Punk's 434 day reign in the modern era. Um, WWE thinks we are absolutely retarded. Brock Lesnar holds the WWE Universal Championship. The record that Punk has is for the title that AJ Styles has. The WWE Championship. Does Vince McMahon think we're bloody idiots? Does WWE think we're the most illogical, idiotic people in this bloody planet or something? Brock Lesnar holding the Universal title far beyond CM Punk's reign will not count. It will be, it will be the longest reigning Universal Champion, not longest reigning champion in the modern era. And what a slap in the face to Punk. I know the guy doesn't give a shit. He's at home. He, he'd be at home with possibly the most beautiful person in the world, AJ Lee. He'd be at home with her, you know, doing his thing, training for UFC, and or whatever stuff that they do together at home. But still, like CM Punk would give a shit. Like, like CM Punk would give a shit. It's like... He, he, CM Punk was a better champion than Brock Lesnar anyway. So our greatest champion of all time, Brock Lesnar, is going to be about, oh yeah, he sits at home majority of the year. He sits at home majority of the year. He passes the record due to sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. It's like Nikki Bella, when she broke AJ Lee's record, she, she broke the record due to 
not defending the title every every single month. Seriously, what a seriously. Does nobody we think we're idiots? Oh my god, man. WWE are absolutely illogical, man. They're absolutely illogical. They think we are brainless idiots. That's the reason why I heard the reason why people why WWE keeping the title on Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Keep having the part timers. Keep having those part timers, man. Keep having those part timers steal everything from the people who you should be pushing. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Brock Lesnar wins due to Roman Reigns spearing. Roman Reigns spears Brock Lesnar through the cage. And since they didn't know what to do, they awarded the match to Brock Lesnar. And... It was basically because Brock Lesnar hit the ground first. Even though he was still lying on the cell, the, the still lying on the cage that broke. But the referees awarded the match to, to Brock Lesnar. Does so what does this mean now? Well, obviously this means Brock Lesnar is still universal champion. We're still not seeing the universal championship. And Brock Lesnar probably won't show up until SummerSlam. Great. Cool, WWE. Nice nice work. You're going to have your main title disappear for another two months. Where, where are we? We're in April. May, June, July. Good on you, WWE. You're going to have your top main title disappear for three months. Good job. But ultimately, this means the Roman Reigns experiment, hopefully, is over. Hopefully, the Roman Reigns agenda is over. Hopefully, they never push this guy ever again. I'm not saying they didn't have to turn Roman Reigns into a bloody jobber. I'm more saying that stop pushing this guy so hard until the fans accept him. Turn him heel. WWE, this is your last chance to turn him heel. Those are my thoughts on that, man. Those are my thoughts on that. Anyway, let's go through the rest of the card. We The show started off with John Cena versus Triple H. If you've seen one Triple H John Cena match, you've seen them all. This match I really didn't care about. John Cena got the win with an attitude adjustment. And then he thanked the Saudi Arabians for everything and hopefully they have a good night sorry about that interruption uh, next we had Cedric Alexander and Kalisto good match very good match I enjoyed it it was a great enjoyable match Cedric Alexander got the win, obviously, because there's no reason to have him... You know, there was absolutely no reason... Absolutely no reason at all to have... Uh, Kalisto to win. Cedric Alexander just won the title. Good match, though. Good match, though. Next, we had Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy versus The Bar. Cesaro and Sheamus. Now, a lot of people... A lot of people have been complaining about their entrance music. People have been very much been complaining about how their entrance music works. You know, it goes from Matt Hardy's theme to Bray Wyatt's theme, then back to Matt Hardy's theme. I I don't have a, I don't have an issue with it. I mean, like people always say entrance music doesn't really matter. Like when like when Nakamura turned it, ha changed his theme song, everybody had a hissy fit. Everybody had a hissy fit about it, and entrance music doesn't really make make a difference. 
To me, an entrance music doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, it makes the character. Yeah, it makes the character. But ultimately, if entrance music doesn't really make a difference, then this doesn't make a difference. So, that's what I'm trying to say here. A lot of people have been saying there's no reason for, the, for, the, for their themes to be mixed together. You know, stop making entrance music sound like the most important thing in, in WWE. Okay? I don't have a problem with the theme music. Matt and Bray got the win, obviously, because the bar are on SmackDown Live. Jeff Hardy versus Jinder Mahal. I mean, what the hell is up with Jinder Mahal, man? This guy sucks hell, man. I, I'm so tired of people saying about how good Jinder Mahal is. Jinder Mahal isn't even that good. He botches the Whisper of the Wind. He botches the whisper of the wind. It's like he got hit by a ghost. Jinder Mahal sucks. And I'm glad they're finally de-pushing this guy. I'm so glad that they're finally sending this guy back down to where he belongs. In obscurity. That's where Jinder belongs, in obscurity. He doesn't belong around championships. Jeff Hardy wins. Good. Jeff Hardy got the win here, and it was well deserved. Next, we had the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos. Obviously, the storyline continuation here can't really continue due to Naomi not being there. But Harper and Rowan get the win. They beat the Usos. Next, we had a very good ladder match. But it was also kind of disappointing at the same time. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor, Simone Joe, and The Miz. The best part about this match is how it ended. Finn Balor was fighting his way to get to the top of the ladder. And as he reached the top of the ladder, and he was about to grab the, grab the Intercontinental Championship... Seth Rollins comes out of nowhere and climbs up the ladder and immediately snatches the title and then falls off the ladder while Finn Balor was on the ladder. Now that was good. I think if I had to predict anything, I think this could be a good time to turn Finn Balor heel. This is a good opportunity for WWE to turn Finn Balor heel and have his demon character as the heel character. Have Demon King Balor be heel. Have the face paint Finn Balor be a heel. You know? That's what I would do. Seth Rollins retains his title here. AJ Styles versus Nutcracker Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura. The the Nutcracker. The man that loves to punch AJ Styles in the phenomenal balls. In his phenomenal balls. This was a very good match. I mean, this match was better than their WrestleMania match. Very fast paced, quick. I wish this is what I, I wish this was their match at WrestleMania. Uh, AJ Styles and Nakamura don't have a winner. It ends in a double countout. And also Nakamura... Um, also AJ Styles, before the ending, I believe AJ Styles is going for a phenomenal forearm. But then the referee backs away. Because he's worried that he's going to get hit. Then Nakamura performs his Nutcracker Nakamura yet again. His Nutcracker attack. The low blow. And... When the referee's back was turned. And then and then eventually this match led to a double counter. And also, it feels like their final encounter is going to take place at Backlash. Because Backlash has already confirmed AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. 
We've got one more match to talk about before the 50-man Royal Rumble. The Undertaker versus Rusev Day. Now listen. I... I want to tell you guys. Every single time when Rusev's in a match. When it's Rusev. When Rusev's in a match. Everybody always says the word buried. When it was Randy Orton, everybody blamed blamed Randy Orton. Everybody blamed it all on Randy Orton. Everybody blamed it on the Viper for burying Rusev. Everybody blamed the Viper. Everybody blamed blamed other people for every Rusev loss. Every time this guy loses, it's always the word buried. What? But buried is thrown at Rusev so much that the word buried is almost irrelevant now. Listen, I don't think Rusev was buried in this match. Not at all. Not at all. I don't think he was buried. He had a good match. He had a good showing. Rusev had a good showing against The Undertaker. This is what I don't understand. Why is a good showing a burial? It's like nobody looks at it as, Oh, Rusev had a good showing here. 9 minutes and 40 seconds this match went for. Why can't people appreciate the fact that Rusev hung with The Undertaker? Be happy it wasn't like WrestleMania. Be happy it wasn't like WrestleMania. Rusev got more offense in this match... Than, than John Cena. Rusev got more offense. You know, everybody complained that Stephanie McMahon got a lot of offense on Ronda Rousey. Everybody, were, everybody wanted Ronda Rousey to completely squash Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania. I had no problems with Stephanie McMahon getting offense on Ronda. I had, I had no... I, I, I didn't care about that at all. Because... You can't have Ronda Rousey completely kill Stephanie McMahon in a ring. Makes no sense. You need to give the you need to give the opposing opponents offense and give them an, uh, give them a chance. Rusev had a good showing here. Ultimately, he loses due to a choke slam. At least he didn't get tombstoned. Undertaker performs a choke slam on Rusev. Puts him in the casket. Aiden English tries to interfere. Then he gets choke slammed. He under and this is and, and I don't mean to sound rude here, but Aiden English, when he got choke slammed, he went for a ride. He went for a ride, man. He was sent up very high and went slamming down into the um into the ground. And Aiden English, man. That tombstone pile driver on Aiden English. Holy crap, I was uh, very worried for Aiden English there. Looked like he looked like he literally got li literally it looked like literally he landed on his head. But Rusev Day were buried in not not literally. They were not literally buried. They were buried in the casket. Rusev and Aiden English are in the casket and the Undertaker wins. Now everybody's going to blame The Undertaker for Rusev and Aiden English's burial. In my opinion, this match... In my opinion, Rusev had a good showing. So to me, this does not mean a burial for Rusev. Let's talk about... And finally, guys, we're going to talk about the 50-man Royal Rumble before we end things off. I am going to list out the entrants here. I'm going to be giving out all the entrances in their current number order. And and I want to talk about the Royal Rumble here as well because WWE, they made this sound like that this counts as a Royal Rumble. This may, They made this sound like an official Royal Rumble that counts onto the record books, which I'll talk about. Number one was Daniel Bryan, which I thought was a great choice. I thought Daniel Bryan coming out at number one was a good choice. 
Dolph Ziggler came in at number two. I thought that was a good choice as well. Number three, out came Sin Cara. He was the first man eliminated, which I thought was a good spot for Sin Cara, because why would you put him in a crummy spot later on? Curtis Axel came in at number four. Good spot for him. He came out to his own music instead of The Miz's music. Mark Henry came out at number five. Curtis Axel was the second man eliminated. Which I'm not going to go in order of the eliminations. But he was the second man eliminated. Mike Canellis was the third man eliminated. He got eliminated in three seconds. Welcome to the WWE, Mike Canellis. Okay, after that, I'm not going to go through any more eliminations. Number six was, like I said, number six was Mike Canales. Number seven was a su sumo wrestler by the name of Hariko Sumi, which I have no idea who he is. Victor, number eight was Victor of the Ascension. Number nine was Kofi Kingston. Number ten was Tony Nese. Number eleven was Dash Wilder. And number twelve was Hornswoggle. It's good to see Hornswoggle again. Even though he wasn't really, you know... He might not have been the biggest character in WWE, but Hornswoggle, he got the best. He got a really good ovation by the crowd, which I thought was pretty cool. Number thirteen was Primo. Number fourteen was Xavier Woods. Number fifteen was Bo Dallas. Number sixteen was Kurt Angle. Number seventeen was Dash Wilder. Uh, Scott Dawson, sorry, Scott Dawson. Yeah, Dash Wilder entered the Rumble twice. <laughs> Dash Wild uh, Scott Dawson, number 17. Gold Dust at number 18. Con Connor, number 17 of the Ascension. Elias. Now, Elias had a very good showing here. He lasted for 34 minutes. Very good, very good lasting there for um, Elias at number 20. Luke Gallows, number 21. Rhino at 22. Drew Gulak at 23. Now I liked. Now I really enjoyed the additions of the 205 Live superstars in that in that match. I really liked that. Number 24 was NXT's Tucker Knight. I was pretty impressed with him. He had a very good showing. Number 25 was Bobby Roode. Number 26 was Fandango. Number 27 was Chad Gable. Number 28 was Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio made another cameo appearance. Mojo Rowley at 29. Tyler Breeze at number 30. He was eliminated in 16 seconds. Good job, Tyler Breeze. Well, well, well done, Tyler Breeze. Good job, WWE. Big E at number 31. Carl Anderson at 32. Apollo Crews at 33. Roderick Strong made a surprise appearance with the... Uh, now, what I found incredibly weird about this when Roderick Strong came out, he had the Undisputed Era music, but he didn't have the... Undisputed Era graphics. He didn't have the Undisputed Era graphics. He had his own graphics. Randy Orton at 35. I totally forgot Randy Orton was in the match. But he had. But Randy Orton had a good showing as always. He's Slater, number 36. Some NXT talent by the name of Baba Tunde. Never heard of this guy in my entire life. Never heard of this guy in my entire life. I've never seen this guy wrestle. So, so, uh, fill me in if anybody knows who he is. Baron Corbin. At 38. Titus O'Neil. Now, Titus O'Neil had the funny moment of the uh, of the night at the same time I almost feel sorry for the guy he trips over and he slides underneath the ring and you hear the commentators just laughing their heads off 
I laughed too, but at the same time, I was like, ah, oh, poor Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil, 39. NXT's Dan Matha. Jeez, a lot of these NXT guys coming out late. But, man, it didn't matter. Dan Matha. Braun Strowman came out at number 41. At number 42 was Ty Dillinger. He lasted 29 seconds. Goodbye, Ty Dillinger. Goodbye. Braun Strowman was all alone in the ring. Um, I believe Daniel Bryan was outside taking a rest at this point. Kurt Hawkins comes out at entrance 43. He didn't want to get in the ring. He tried to run away. Braun Strowman grabbed him and tosses him out. Entrant 44 was Bobby Lashley. Entrant 45 was the great Carl Lee. Yeah. Need I say more? Entrant 46 was Kevin Owens. Now, before I continue on, what happened to Sami Zayn? Uh, I, I believe Sami Zayn was in this match. What happened? What happened here? Like, that was the thing that really confused me, because... I pretty I swore Sami Zayn was in this match. I, I don't know what was what, what, what happened. I don't know what happened. Sami Zayn wasn't in the match. So if anybody knows what happened to Sami Zayn, why he wasn't in the match, please fill me in. Because I was very confused. Because I, I, I swear, I, I swear Sami Zayn was in this match. Shane McMahon comes out next at 47. Shelton Benjamin comes in at entrant 48. Big Cass was entrant 49. And Chris Jericho is number 50. He makes his return. But ultimately, the winner was Braun Strowman with 13 eliminations. Now, Daniel Bryan, he survived the longest in this match. He was an hour and 16 minutes. Now, the weird thing about this is that WWE confirmed that Daniel Bryan broke the record of longest time in the ring. Now, I don't think that should count. Dan we all love Daniel Bryan, but honestly, I think that shouldn't count. And they were also saying that Bobby Roode was entering his first Royal Rumble, and all these other guys who haven't been in a Royal Rumble, they were saying it's their first. You know, they were counting it as like it was a traditional Royal Rumble. So, Braun Strowman eliminates 13 men. Now, I don't know if that's the record. I'm pretty sure that is a record because I'm pretty sure what Braun Strowman did just now was break Roman Reigns' elimination record, but I don't think they've counted that. But, ultimately though, guys, I think Daniel Bryan's 1 hour and 16 minutes should not count as the longest time in the Royal Rumble. I feel like that's a bit of... A, I, I think that's a little bit of a... A bit of a disrespect to Rey Mysterio, in my opinion. I believe you doing that is a... Bit of a slight disrespect... To uh, Rey Mysterio, but... We'll have to... Wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see what WWE do about it. But, honestly, in my opinion, it shouldn't count. It shouldn't count. It never should count from the beginning. But, Braun Strowman wins the 50-man battle royal by eliminating Big Cass. Big Cass eliminates Daniel Bryan... 
and Braun Strowman eliminates Big Cass. And Braun Strowman wins a big, uh, big trophy, which I think looks really good. I really enjoy that trophy. That trophy looks great. At least it's actually better than the women's one they made. Now, now those types of trophies, the one they did for the Greatest Royal Rumble, those type of trophies they need to hand out. Those are the trophies they need to hand out to winners of Battle Royals if you're going to do them at WrestleMania. That was a beautiful looking trophy. And also, Braun Strowman was rewarded a championship, which I believe is not going to be defended. The greatest Royal Rumble champion. For the greatest Royal Rumble championship. Eh. The belt. I guess the belt was alright. It didn't look too bad. Did, the reason why it was colored green is because they were in Saudi Arabia. And, it, and it's obviously part of their heritage that everything is green. But. Anyway guys. Ultimately, this event, you know, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable for what it was. But, in my opinion, this event was very enjoyable. I still wish they had women. Because you know how much I love my women's revolution. I'm against people who hate the evolution. I'm against two people that hate it. But... But ultimately, though, guys, this was a pretty good event. I thought this was a very enjoyable event. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you all for joining for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts down below on what you thought of the greatest Royal Rumble. It's not the greatest Roman Rumble. It's the great Braun Rumble. Or Brock Rumble, whatever you prefer. The greatest, the greatest house show. You know, you come up with a name besides Roman, because Roman Reigns obviously is is a loser. Roman Reigns is a loser once again. Hopefully, the Roman Reigns experiment comes to an end after tonight. That's all I've got for you guys. Talk to you guys next time for my discussion video, which I have been wanting to do for a while. It's a discussion video I've been planning for for a couple of days, and I wanted to talk about it. Hopefully, I can get it out maybe later on today, or maybe tomorrow, because, or maybe tomorrow. But anyway, guys, thank you all for joining me. Talk to you guys next time.